Well, hello and welcome to Spiritual Warfare, a Marine's perspective, part of parallels between the Marine Corps and Christianity. And on this episode, we're going to talk about overcoming your weaknesses through Spiritual Boot Camp. And we'll get right into it right after this. Well, welcome back to Spiritual Warfare, a Marine's Perspective, part of parallels between the Marine Corps and Christianity. Mm, in fact, I got my coffee. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like Holy Spirit in a cup. And today's episode, we're going to talk about overcoming your weaknesses, part of spiritual boot camp. And we want to get right into it. So here we go. So previously, we've talked about knowing your enemy, and then also knowing your weaknesses. And of course, this one is about overcoming your weaknesses, and specifically through spiritual boot camp. All right. So listen, when I was young, I joined this thing called the United States Marine Corps. And I wear this cover once in a while. Excuse me. Uh, although I seem to not be a very much of a hat man anymore in my life as I get older, but I figured I'd wear it for this episode. So when I was real young, 18 years old, I decided to join the Marine Corps and, it, it, and, and I did my research about why I chose the Marine Corps. But most people who join the Corps join the Marine Corps because they like the way the uniform looks. And I must admit, that was part of my decision because it looked good, right? And I wanted to look good. And a lot of people also join the Corps because they know that it's the greatest military service in the world. And they want to be a part of that. Well, one thing that is definitely true when someone joins the Marine Corps is they don't know much about the Marine Corps and what it means to be a United States Marine. And another thing that is true is that once you take that oath for the first time, you're a little bit intimidated, but you're also invigorated. You're excited about starting a journey that you really have no clue what's in store for you, right? In boot camp or thereafter. You're invigorated by it as well because it's something new that's going to change your life forever. You will never be the same when you earn that title. But you all, that intimidation is a fear factor as well. You, you wonder whether or not you're going to be able to measure up as a Marine. You wonder whether or not you're you're going to be able to earn that title and graduate Marine Corps boot camp and how well you will do individually as a Marine. We all had those thoughts at 17, 18 years old when we decided to join the Marine Corps. Then we started, if you had pool E meetings, when I joined, we didn't have them. But in today's world, you go to what's called a pool E meeting. And the recruiters start to prepare you as best they can for boot camp. And you could go to one or none or possibly 50 pulley meetings. It depends on the schedule of things and so on. So some people going to Marine Corps boot camp might be a little more prepared than others. So let me ask you this question. Does this process at all sound a bit familiar to you? Well, if you're a Christian, it should. Why? Because when I chose to attend a church service for the first time in my life or listen to a gospel message for the first time in my life, guess what? I 
know much, if anything, about Christianity. What it meant to be a Christ follower. And that may be true for you as well. When you decided to go to that church service or listen to that gospel message for the first time, maybe it have witnessed peace in other people's lives. Maybe you just wanted to ask why about God knows what. Maybe all you knew is that without Christ, you would spend an eternity separated from our creator. Not a pleasant thought. But you decided. You made a decision for Christ. And in that decision, forgiveness is granted. And you know what's awesome about forgiveness? There's liberation, there's joy, there's excitement in it. But part of that decision, there's supposed to be an oath. That's right. A commitment to make him Lord of your life. An unofficial oath, if you will, that says, Lord, I will honor you. Hmm. This sounds familiar, right? But once you're born again, guess what? Then intimidation sets in. What do you mean? Pastor Ron, what do you mean by intimidation as a born-again believer? Well, we're human. And we, we make a decision for Christ. We're forgiven. We make that commitment to make him Lord of our lives. And there is a somewhat of a change. But guess what? We're still who we were before to some degree. Everything, all our habits, they didn't change. Some things changed, but not everything, right? In fact, guess what? There's a lot of things about our lives before Christianity that we didn't even realize didn't please God. Or, for that matter, were blatant sin. We just didn't know, right? So then when we start to find out these things, we evaluate our lives and see so many things that are somehow just wrong or just don't please him. And then we start to think that there's no way that we could measure up. But your excitement for salvation keeps you coming back to him. Whether that's reading his word, studying his word, going to a church service, hanging out with born again believers instead of the other people, right? You make these changes in your life and you decide, you, you, even though you feel unworthy, you feel so unworthy. And so does that 19, 18, 19 year old kid who joins the Marine Corps. When you get to boot camp, boy, let me tell you what, you feel very unworthy. So as an 18, 19 year old kid, you're on your way to boot camp, Marine Corps boot camp. And that excitement and intimidation they increase equally as you get closer and closer to Paris Island or San Diego because you don't know what to expect. Even though the recruiter tried to prepare you as best he or she could, you still don't know what to expect. It's an unknown. And you, the only thing you really know is that Marine Corps boot camp is the hardest boot camp of any military service, hands down. So that excitement and intimidation, it increases as you get closer and closer. Then you get to meet your drill instructor for the first time. And that excitement, it pretty much goes away. And all you're left with is that intimidation. And if you're a United States Marine out there watching this video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I remember being on that bus pulling into Paris Island in the middle of the night in 1986. And I was fine. I was fine until that MP got on the bus at the front gate. And before he got off, he said something about welcome to Paris Island. And as soon as he said that, I started... 
scared to death. 18 years old, scared to death. And that fear really didn't subside until some point later when I realized that I was no longer afraid. I was no longer intimidated because I was get, had gotten used to it. I didn't even realize or know that the fear had diminished and went away. <laughs> Same thing applies in Christianity, ladies and gentlemen. At some point after salvation, that fear factor, intimidation factor dissipates, goes away. And you don't even realize it until all of a sudden one day you wake up and realize, you know what? I know, excuse me, I know that I'm not going to be perfect in this Christian walk. And I pray every day, Lord, please help me represent you well to, the, to my family and to the world. But I'm no longer afraid of failing him. Even though I know I will, I'm not afraid of it anymore. I'm not intimidated by this, all of this. But anyway, so you meet that drill instructor for the first time and you stand on those yellow footprints. Mm. It's surreal, if you will. Your life is never going to be the same. Never going to be the same. 